Hey guys, Greg Benz here. In this video, you'll learn how to tackle one of the most difficult and common problems when using luminosity masks to blend multiple exposures, and that is these halos you can get where the sky and the foreground meet. You can see we get this really nasty halo edge throughout the image. Now this happens to be an image that I processed in my Exposure Blending Master Course, and in the course, I show you how I would actually process this using techniques designed to avoid those sorts of issues but I've reprocessed it here, allowing myself to use techniques that can get you into trouble and create these halos for the purposes of showing you how to remove the halo because it's not always necessary to start over if you run into a halo. There's some good ways you can remove it, especially with Lomenzia version 8, which has an updated edge feature, which we'll use here to clean up these edges. Now, if you haven't seen the course, just to get you caught up to speed real quick, the general idea is that we'd start with a raw image, process it once for the foreground, and then I processed again, in this case, for the sky to bring out this beautiful sky and blended it together with the foreground using this luminosity mask, which reveals things in the top. If we alt click on the mask, we can see the mask and you see how this blends together and just overall has a dramatic improvement over the original. So let's just hide the original. It's not doing anything for the image or just to show you where we started. And let's take a look at how we can fix these edges. Now to do so, the first thing we want to do is take a good look at what the problem actually is. So let's zoom in and take a look at the halo and where things are kind of going wrong. The problem could be coming from one of the layers. If we look at the underlying foreground layer, there's no obvious halo here. There's a little bit of a halo in some of the clouds here, but in general, there's not really a halo in the raw. When we look at blending in the top layer, that's where we see this halo. Now, if we shift click on the mask, we can see that the top layer itself doesn't have a halo, it's the way that the two are blended together that's causing a problem. And as we toggle this off and on, you can see that the issue is that the sky in this case hasn't grown further enough into the foreground. This foreground is really bright. We need to bring a little bit more sky at the edges down. So what we'd like to do ideally, if we alt click and look at the mask, is take the white here and just bump it down towards the black by about one pixel. That should fix the halo. Now we can do that using Lomenzia by loading this as a selection and then refining it with the edge feature. So let's command click on this mask and you can see the current mask is selected and the edges are identified here with the marching ants. And you can see of course the edge goes right through the edge of the halo. No surprise there. We just want to bring it a little bit out. To do that, we'll click on edge to refine it. The left hand side here are the options to create an edge selection. So we want to make sure we have edges selected and then choose the options below. Let's start with a small radius of just one. I want to generally start with a small change because if we make too large of a radius in our selection that we can paint beyond the halo and just replace one halo with another one. And then even though we're expanding out from the current mask, the radius and the blurring we'll do in the next step actually push the pixels out a bit. So I'm going to contract by one pixel using minus one here just to offset the growth that we're going to see in the edge here clicking on selection, we will see a preview of the selection we get. So this white is showing these are the areas I'll be able to paint in just a moment through this selection. And there's a blur being added here to help soften things up for a more natural result. I'm just going to click OK and accept the results. And we don't see the marching ants because I have that preference toggled on here in Lemenzia to hide the marching ants. But we see the selection button is lit green. And that's telling us we do have an active selection. If we click on check cell, we can see, in fact, it's exactly what we saw just a moment ago. And we can use that to paint right over this halo with white because we want more white to reveal more of the sky. So I'm hitting B for my brush. I've got it set to a very high opacity and an extremely low flow, which is generally what you want to do. And as I brush over these areas, notice how nicely it just fills in and fixes that edge halo. If I click before, you can see the halo, and then after, how we've removed that halo. So let's zoom back and I'm just gonna quickly work over the image and we'll see if we can't get it done with one selection. Most of the time, when you're dealing with an image like this where you've got bright sky and then even brighter sky and darker sky, all these different values, there's a good chance that a single selection is not gonna completely get the job done. But, you know, it's just, you gotta start somewhere and starting small is generally a good idea and then we can go with a more aggressive selection later if it's not quite getting the job done. And in some cases, I may need to brush a couple times. Looks like I'm not quite getting all the 
edges in there. I'll have to come back to that. And here it's kind of failing. It's not really working in this area around the bright sky. So I'm going to skip this for now. We'll come back to it. all this yellow bright sky. If I try and brush in here, it's not really fixing the, the problem. I'm going to undo that. We'll come back to it. So it seems like the selection I've already created works pretty well when we've got the dark sky edges, but not so much against the brighter yellow sky areas. So that's a good example of why we're going to need more than one selection. I don't want to go and create a more aggressive selection just yet because I'll probably just create problems in these dark areas. So I'm going to work with two selections. And in fact, because we're going to have multiple selections, I'm going to click on cell and let's call this small radius, knowing that we're going to create a bigger radius later. It's a good idea when you're working with these kind of selections to save them as you work. And that way you can easily toggle back and forth between them because you know, you're working on a lot of small details and the odds that you get everything the first go aren't great. You'll probably look at the image later and find out, you know what, I missed a spot. And it's really nice if you can come back to the exact perfect selection you already created and use that, especially when we're modifying the edges here. If I try to go and command click this and use cell again, the areas I painted are not exactly what they were before and we'd get a different edge selection than the one I have right now. So better to just save where I am in this process and then fix things with another selection on these other areas. So I'm just skipping right over these bright areas, knowing that I'm going to come back and hit them in just a moment. It's not doing a lot of work here, but it's helping a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do what it can because a small adjustment, you know, in the right areas can help. So sometimes it's almost the combination of the two that gets the job done. You can see in some areas, the rock here, it's working in other areas. It's not fully fixing the, uh, the problem there but it does give you a good sense of what we're dealing with. This tree is not coming along all that well just yet. Yeah, so this bright sky is really kind of an issue. And we'll just come back to it all in just a moment. I don't want to bore you guys with too much brushing here, but just trying to get things kind of quickly completed along the edges here, all the way out. And again, I'm working super quick here. I would spend more time on this for an important image I was going to print. Um, also, I know that it's not doing a lot of work in these areas, so I'm not going to spend too much time until I go and create a new selection. So let's do that now. I've gone and hit it with a one pixel radius. Let's zoom in to one of these areas here and let's create a new selection for these areas. So I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. Let's now Command click the mask to load that as a selection again. And you can see we just need to push it further here. Notice this bright yellow edge on the inside of the rock where it's kind of bleeding over from the underlying exposure. It's just so bright, the light's kind of wrapping around the rock edge. We just want to expand it a little further. So we'll click on edge. And this time let's use a radius of two. We use the same expand contract value. Click on selection. And this time I'm going to expand my feathering. Let's use one pixel. See that blurs a little bit more. Clicking OK. And let's save this. We'll call this big radius. Hopefully I got the right one, but it's just a good idea to save things as we go. Hitting B for our brush. And now brushing in these areas, you can see that's a much better fix for these areas of sky here. So the bright edges, it's doing a lot better. So I'm going to zoom back and just start at the top and methodically work from left to right. Don't need to zoom in too far on this stuff. You can definitely overdo it. If you're looking too closely at the details, you just spend a lot of time on something that you wouldn't see. And this is already very, very close detail, more than enough for printing this at, you know, say 40 by 60 inches. On my monitor, I'm looking at a 27 inch monitor. So if you're looking at this on, say, a phone or something small, obviously this may not be the right zoom level for your device. But in my environment, this is the right choice. And see how nicely it's just cleaning up that bad haloed edge there is really kind of you know from before to after getting rid of those halo issues and it does in a few places i agree look a little heavy but look at the underlying image the raw itself has some pretty dark tones so that's not per se a dark halo that i'm creating there it's more that that's just kind of the way that i process the raw and if i want to do something different there i'll have to process the raw differently or i can come back and with some other techniques, but it's not an exposure blending problem that's creating those little dark edges. It's a, just the actual raw itself 
has a little bit of darkness around these edges and not entirely surprising given the aggressive raw processing I was using. Um, I don't mind it. It's really not an issue. This dark light, dark light alternating pattern, that clearly looks fake and a problem. These other heavier edges, they're really not an issue. I mean, we're looking at this so close. This is definitely pixel peeping and looking too close for a print when it comes to some of that stuff. But in terms of avoiding something you're going to see in the prints here, it's really nicely improving things here. And you can see it can move pretty fast in some of these areas. Now something like these trees, if it's not fully coming off, you can hit Command D to deselect, freehand paint over that, and then Command Shift D to keep moving. So you just may not need the selection. So as I'm doing that, just notice the selection button may temporarily turn gray or red instead of green, and that's just indicating that I've deselected like right here. I'll give it a first pass with the selection, and there's a few areas that didn't quite go away, so let's deselect and hit that again. You know, freehand in these areas is going to be fine. I may use a little smaller brush to make sure I'm not screwing anything up in the detail. Reselect with Command Shift D, and that should really improve things. And let's just look from before and after. You see how terrible the tree looked before. I mean, just look at this detail. If you zoom in, we're really looking close now, but you can see how it's just terrible. And we cleaned it right up using both the selection and, in this case, a little bit of that freehand painting. So I'm just going to keep working over the details here. Zoom in a little bit. I can tell there's a little bit more of a problem here. So I'm at 200%, and that's probably a pretty good place for me to be on a monitor of this size. Maybe 400% would be okay if I really had to enlarge it, but I don't think that's necessary. And notice a little bit of chromatic aberration or some kind of color fringing here, which is not going to be something you can fix with this technique because that is in the actual image data somewhere there. You can see the fringing, but you can see now that we've nicely cleaned up those edges. And let's just take one last look at you know some of this detail here. If we come in and just look from before, where we've got that nasty halo edge all along the bottom there, to after, really cleans that up nicely. Some of these areas here from before, where it's haloed to after, just really improves the image. And for the sake of making a great print, it's the kind of detail work that will really set you apart. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to learn of new tutorials. And check out the links below if you want to learn more about Lemenzia or my Exposure Blending Master Course.